Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee. I'm moving, moving forward. Good morning and happy Sunday to all. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Be glad and rejoice in it. Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee and Friends. My name is Renee and my co-hosts and friends are Lenore, we have Jackie, and Noni. Today our topic is procrastination. Before we get started, we've got to give a shout out to our sponsor Speedflow Investment Club where you can invest a small amount of $20 and what you're going to gain is forever income. You can call them at 248-721-1256. Tell them you heard it on Always Moving Forward with Renee and Friends. Also a shout out to Mr. Antoine Bell, CEO of Bell Global Network. He makes it possible for us to be with you every Sunday. But we're talking about procrastination today. What is procrastination? Mm, good topic. The Bible talks about it being an act of willfully delaying the doing of something that should be done. Mm -hmm. And in some people, it is a habitual way of handling any task. Yeah. While the word procrastination itself is not found in the Bible, but we can find some principles to help guide us. Sometimes procrastination is a result of laziness. The Bible commends hard work and industry. Proverb 12th chapter 24th verse and 13th chapter and 4th verse. And it warns against any slackness. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as you're working for the Lord and not for men. Yes, yes, yes. If we put our hearts into <laughs> our work, we will probably find it difficult to press, procrastinate too much. Does this describe your life? Do you jump out of bed every morning, energized and thrilled about starting a day, your day? Do you enjoy vibrant health, health, deep love, time freedom, and financial abundance? Does your life feel fulfilling, mm -hmm. expanded, purposeful? Does it inspire you and bring you joy? Do you have the freedom and confidence of knowing you can accomplish anything, anything you want? If the answer to any of those questions is no, then you're in the right place because we are about to help you change that. That life is within your reach. But what's keeping you from it? Most people aren't living their, the life they want simply because they procrastinate about the very things that will get them to that life. Do you ladies agree that nobody plans to procrastinate, but somehow it just keeps happening. Just like some people don't keep their New Year's resolutions. Do you ladies agree? Yes, yes. I do. I, I think people do. Some people do it on purpose. You think they procrastinate on purpose? Mm -hmm. Why? They get into a habit, and sometimes, sometimes they don't have the knowledge to to do what they need to do because some things that they might want to do they have to research it and then if they don't research it then okay then they'll make up an excuse or say they're going to do it no they ain't going to do it because they haven't done the necessary research to get it done 
Sometimes they just say it because they know they just ain't going to do it, and it's just to entertain you. <laughs> they're going to do it, right? <laughs> Whoever they're talking to, it's just to entertain them. What do you think about that? Well, you know, actually, I think procrastination is a big issue for most of us. I myself am a procrastinator, and I find I procrastinate over the things that I really don't want to do, or maybe I don't have the motivation to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, in recent years, I realized that procrastination is one of my weaknesses, so I strive very hard to overcome that. So when there's something that I need to do, I try to put a timeline mm -hmm. out and try to make prioritize my issues and try to get it done. Okay, so that's like setting some goals, setting am I right? Goals. Setting some yes. goals mm -hmm. and attainable goals, something yes. that you can do. Yes. Okay, now what do you feel about that? Because I heard you say yes. I did say yes. I okay. did say yes. Well, well let's but, elaborate on that. <laughs> <laughs> I did say yes, Renee. Um, but, I, you know, I agree with Jackie and I agree with Noni. And I agree with what you said, too. And like, and, uh, like Noni said, I, too have a tendency to procrastinate. I don't mean to procrastinate, but um, sometimes it happens. <laughs> That's I do. True. I do. Sometimes it happens. Just like, you know, um, if I have something that, if I buy something new, and my daughter always told me, mind you buy something new, give away something, throw away something. But I think everything I have is worth something. <laughs> to me, I think everything I have is good. And my, every time my daughter come over, she said, Mom, you got to give away something. I got like four closets of clothes. She's like, Mom, you got to give away something. And so she said, you procrastinate, you know. And I do sometimes. I don't mean to. Well, but anyway. Well, that's what your daughter tell you. What yes, you my do, daughter. That's she does. what you tell you. I, no, no, no. But, you know, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. Uh, when I purchase something, I try to throw away, you know, give away two things. So uh, I'm trying, mm -hmm. but. Very good. Well, you know. Yeah. I procrastinate as well, yes. and and I brought up New Year's Eve because we're like, you know, just a little bit over the halfway point of the year, right. and I know that a lot of us, including myself, and maybe some people at this table, you know, they don't make New Year's resolutions, but I know every year I'm saying I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. But we are now in the seventh month, going to the eighth month, and I have not lost a pound. <laughs> I tell you all earlier, I'm going on a diet, yes. so I'm still, still trying to get there. Yes. So yes. I procrastinate on a lot. I know we talked about earlier uh, getting up clean, cleaning up the bedroom. Okay, just yes. doing that. And, and you know, you lay there in bed and you know you have to do it, but you tell yourself, I'm going to get to it later. Yes. I'm going to get to it later. And yes. does later ever come? Not all the does time. When I get ready to go to bed, <laughs> not all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it comes. Later comes. It might be a year <laughs> or six months. Later but never maybe. comes, people, because you can always say later. Yes. yes. So yes. later never comes. No, it does. That's no, true. it doesn't. That's true. It, it doesn't come. But, you know, Jackie, we talked about earlier uh, where, and, and Noni, you did too, about procrastination starts, because we're retired educators. Yes. It starts in, like you were saying, school, at an early age in yeah. school. So you elaborate on that some. Uh, well, you have, a lot of times procrastination come with kids if they have a problem reading, Okay, and if they have a problem reading, then they can't get that knowledge. And so, but also, if they have a problem reading, they will get confusion going on in the classroom, or they get to talking real fast about this and that, and get the kids laughing and stuff. So, and then they don't—you don't never get to the point of what they have to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, if if the teacher is having this child to read. You don't want to do it, procrastination, mm -hmm. and so that's what the child will do. They come up with all type of mm -hmm. interesting ways to take take you off the path of them mm -hmm. reading, okay? <laughs> or you know, even if you have an assignment, because a lot of times we assume people know, but you need some knowledge for certain things that you procrastinate about. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's because you don't have the knowledge to know how to go about and do it. 
And, and you know, you talked about school, you know, like a, at a young age, but that carries on in the house, mm -hmm. right? And then that carries on when they get to college. Right. Because what happens when they get to college? Mom and dad is not right there That's a lot right. of times to tell them, you got this paper to do. That's right. And, and, and they'll just, you know, they oh, won't. They won't read them books. Well, you right, won't, won't read, read the book assignment. Too. And not only that, because of fear too. A lot of procrastination is because of fear. Fear of failure. People fear of failure. Mm -hmm. And people are not motivated right. to do things. Mm -hmm. Just like we're not motivated to get up and clean that room. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how much we know it needs to be done. <laughs> but you should do it. <laughs> right, right. The wise. That is right. Okay, but tell us a little bit about what you're thinking about procrastination. Well, I'm thinking that it can be very detrimental for those in college because mm -hmm. if you're going to um, procrastinate and not keep your assignments up and not keep up with your, your schedule and your assignments and so forth and so on, you are going to be uh, unsuccessful in attaining your goal which is to pass that class. So procrastination can be detrimental and it also can be a, a stumbling block for us because we keep putting off the same things that we know we should do. We just put it off to the next day, to the next day. And being retired, I tend to do that because I came up <laughs> where I had to do things in a timely manner. My mother would not allow me to procrastinate. Would she say, clean up that room? That you room better be it. cleaned up in a timely manner. But I find now that I'm um, retired, hey, if I don't feel like cleaning up the room, I'll get to it tomorrow. <laughs> if I don't feel like washing the dishes, guess what? I don't wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. But it used to be a time where I was so um, passionate about making sure the dishes are clean. Don't leave any dishes in the sink. I'm different now. So procrastination can be good and it can be bad when we use it to benefit our life and to benefit the things that we know we need to accomplish. And, and you know, that's like what causes procrastination. You, laziness, mm -hmm. you're rebelling, you know, the young ones are rebelling, lack of motive, Lace. motivation, fear, lack of education, fear, lack of you're not focused, fatigue. Yeah tired and not knowing where to start. You talked about that earlier, but you know what? How does it affect us? Does it affect us physically? Or, you know, can it affect our quality of life? Sure. Procrastination? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it can definitely it can affect like you mentally. It can affect you medically yeah, you know, too. cause depressing, yeah. depressed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes your procrastination might be related to a physical ailment that you might be having. Okay. okay. See, that's what okay. I'm saying because I'm in the medical field. I've been in the medical field over 40 years. Okay. And I used to work in doctor's office for over 20 years. And I've seen patients come in and they come in, they wait till they get to that extreme. And then they'll say, well, I know I should have came in last month, and, but I did and I put it off. And, and then they wait until they get extreme, you know, and then they come in. But it's a, it's a, at that point, it's at the extreme point where there's something where it's affecting their, their, their medically. Mm -hmm. So... Yes, you know, it can, it can affect you medically. A lot of people wait Right, till, right, it, it can yes. affect you medically. Mm -hmm. But Jackie just said you might have some ailment or right. something mm -hmm. that can okay. make you procrastinate. Right. Well, you know, if I have an ailment, okay. then I know what I can do okay. and what I can't do. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have a tendency to, you know, I, I kind of disagree with that one, Jackie. Because if something's wrong with me, mm -hmm. then I know I can't do it. Right, right. So I'm not going to say, yes, I can, and I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Because my ailment, I know, won't allow me to. You want to get some assistance. But there's a lot of right. people that say they will do something, and then when they don't do it, oh, my arthritis was messing with me. <laughs> or, oh, okay. my so back just, started hurting me. Okay. Oh, well, see, when I, when I say something phys physically wrong with you, I'm talking about something physically where the person just cannot do cannot it. Do it. Well, just cannot do it. Arthritis, you know, mm -hmm. Arthur hits all of them. <laughs> now, Arthur is some of our best friends, which we don't want them to be. I don't have no arthritis. <laughs> you don't know Arthur. I do not know him know yet. Know well, know let me tell you, I know Arthur. I, I, do. I, do. I know you. You know Arthur? Yes, ma'am. All right, then. Of course I do. All right, then. I'm not ashamed. This is Oh, okay. This knee and yeah. off is good friends. Mm -hmm. 
My well, buddy yeah. too. <laughs> but I mean, but you can have a heart condition that means that you can't do certain things. You're absolutely but, but right. You, but a lot of people who do have physical ailments, they really sometimes be in a state of denial of what they can and can't do because a lot of them want to live their life just like they don't have an ailment. And they know that it's going to catch them. When they get home, they might feel it. But when you... A lot when they wake up and come to the realization that I got a bad heart, then I know I can't do it. Right, there are, some people are in denial, yes. but once they wake up, then they know they can't do it. You understand what I'm saying? But procrastination is actually putting off things that you know you need to do, whether you're mm -hmm. limited physically or not. And most of us are not that limited when it comes to some of the basic things we need to do. We just procrastinate, don't want to do it. You know, it's like maybe managing our time better or not wanting to do it. I don't really think it's really about laziness, but it kind of borders on laziness. Well, it's part. It's laziness part, yeah. is part of it. Yes, it is. It's part yes, it of is. it. You know, because there's a whole lot of reasons why people procrastinate. They don't feel like doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. You talked right. about the research. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you've got a couple of points too, don't you? I do, I do. Um, in doing research on procrastination, one of the things they say is that procrastination not only keeps you from getting things done, <laughs> things you need to get done, from getting done. It, al it also keeps freedom and peace that can come along with it from you as well. And they say celebrate the, when you try to uh, uh, find things to help you with the procrastination, it says that um, celebrate the small things. Okay. That's just like for me. So I would celebrate like washing all the saucers and cups and get the pots later. So as long as I get the saucers <laughs> and cups done, then I can get the pots <laughs> later, but I'm gonna get it done, okay? And it says that celebrate the small victories, not just the big ones. The big one for me would be cleaning the whole kitchen. Um, okay. <laughs> because the big ones come less frequently. That, so, that mm -hmm. when I was and that's doing true. Dishes coming up, you ain't want to do them pots and pans, and you stick them in the oven. Absolutely. Oh wow! <laughs> I can you leave them on top of the stove, dishes, but you yeah. stick them in the oven. So, mama or your brothers or sisters can get to them because you say, "Oh no!" <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you know, people are also say, "But I can't cut it." You know, they can't, can't cut it, and that's what we talked about, fear of failure. Yeah. Okay, the fear of failure. Or how can I top this? You know, somebody that's a perfectionist. Right. You know, right. there's a whole lot of people who are perfectionists yes. and are procrastinating. Oh, because how can I absolutely. top this? You know, absolutely. so it, it's just so many reasons. The stuff is just plain boring. <laughs> yeah. You know, just plain boring. Well, okay. I can understand that because housework you have to do every day, all oh, yeah, through okay. the day, and it's really so no. repetitious. <laughs> and I know some of you out there love to do housework. Right? <laughs> yeah, you do. Love to do, and we keep going back to housework. <laughs> we keep going back to I know to there's that. a lot of other things. And, and then, you, you know, a part of uh, procrastination is you can't me make me do it. That's when they rebel. Absolutely. That's right. yes. You know, the young yes. kids are rebelling. Absolutely. Okay, you can't make me do it. That's it. The final set of issues which can underline a procrastinator's behavior. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to talk them into it. You know, you, they say they can't do it, and then you got to go and you got to start getting that brain working. Now, how am I going to get them to change their mind or see this from a different point of view, you know? or trick them into doing something they might not want to do. I'm going to manipulate this whole situation. Okay, well, you know, hope you can talk them into it, but prior to you talking them into it, before you getting into the situation, mm -hmm. the person is saying, you can't make me do it, uh -huh. and that's why I'm not doing it. Then you got mm -hmm. to come out your space mm -hmm. and try to convince them, try to manipulate them, mm -hmm. and show them how they should do it. That's true. Mm -hmm. I have one question. Okay. Did our parents allow us to be procrastinating? You know, I was getting ready to say that. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting ready to say, my, parents, dad, my dad said, didn't I tell you, did you do what I told you to do? Right. And he'd be like, no, sir. Why? 
You got, you got three minutes, you understand me? You, you gone to take care of that, you know? So, but I don't know how it goes nowadays. It's I'm, about I'm time about management, it. managing our time. Right. And a procrastinator knows how to manage time, but they just don't want to do something. Yeah, do I'm going to put it off right. tomorrow, I do. And I can give a good example. I'm doing mm -hmm. something today that I should have did in March. Okay. But I just said, I'll get to it. I get to it. I get to it. But today. Well, what did I day? tell you? I'm yes. losing weight. And when did I say it back in January? But today was the day I actually went and did what I needed to do. Okay. So I felt good about that because Absolutely. when you procrastinate, all you're doing is delaying stuff. Yes. And yes. sometimes it can accumulate and sometimes it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So I feel very proud of myself because I feel like I'm working on my procrastination <laughs> issues. <laughs> yes. Because they are issues. Okay, and well, we know mm -hmm. she feels proud of herself because yeah. she's working on it. But how can we stop procrastination? By doing it. You know, okay, we can, can stop by do doing, just just by doing. Yeah, because you know what? I noticed there's also a difference between men and women. Mm -hmm. Like women won't do certain things, and men, they just get up and do it, and no thought to it, and like, what the heck? How mm -hmm. y'all just get up and just do this? You know, then y'all just think about it, and they just get up and do it. But women, we don't just get up and do some things. We have to think about it. How is, this, how is it going to make us feel? Right, right, you know, right. what we going to get out of it? <laughs> well, you can set a goal, too. You know, I set a goal for we myself. Gotta set goal. That I right. needed to get yeah, done. You you can, I set a goal for myself, and my goal was to tackle something. You know, t for 15 minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle this problem that I'm looking at. I'm going to get rid of it. Like, all the paper on my table that's been sitting there for a month. I took 15 minutes, went through the pile, threw away the old mail. Oh, we so proud. Separated. Of you. I was, I was so proud of myself. I, I like, knew, I know. When I, I tied up your table, when I finished up my table, I said, Lord. kept it neat. I kept that table clean for about three days. Uh oh, for about four <laughs> about a whole week. One. I was proud of myself them days. Okay, but absolutely, you went right back into it. Exactly. Well, you know, I, you know, like, but it ain't bad as it was because I got it organized. We made. I put the junk mail right here on the table. Okay. I put the bills right here on the table. I put the other stuff right here on the table, mm -hmm. so I know what. And I put, a, I take a, a sticky note and I put down junk mail. You know, and then the day before garbage day, all that junk mail go in the trash. Oh, right well, you the okay then? You and okay so, then? I thought you went back and you were. You know, like the habitual one. Oh, no, 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 I said no. that. My but table's halfway clean. I'm proud of myself because it was a fully loaded. Okay, but you know what? I came up with up until now. Up until okay. now. Up until now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Use these words, audience. Up until now. Up until now. It has always been like this. Up until okay. now. <laughs> that sounds good. It's been so hard to. Like, yeah. Up until now. I've never been able to up until now. Great. I have always done this up until now. I didn't want to up, up until, until now. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't up until, until now. So remember those words, up until okay. now. Okay, and remember what Lenore said. You know, reward yourself. Yes. Because us as, you know, uh, educators, we know that giving a student a small assignment and a comp something that they can accomplish within a certain sure. length of time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, makes them feel good about themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they won't go back to the old way. No, they will not. Okay, just like you said, and everyone agreed, we need to set goals. Mm -hmm. yes. so, so what you're saying is that yeah, you got to change your thought pattern. Your way of thinking. Oh, yes, yes, you Definitely got to change that. Way of thinking. You got to change it. And Lenore had to change her way of thinking <laughs> yeah. when she cleaned that table I off. Did. And there's, a, there's a thing called the two minute rule. Okay. And it, it says if it takes less than two minutes, <coughs> excuse me, then do it right now. Do it right now. That's right. And if it no. takes, and that if you start a new habit, if you try to start a new, you know, like picking up all your clothes or mm -hmm. whatever you want to, you know, things that you got to take care of. No, okay. It said it, that it should take it should take less than two minutes. It's called a two minute rule okay. for procrastinators, and you can find that on you can Google it. It's okay. A two minute rule. But but you know the main thing is we've got to complete our tasks. 
tasks. You yes. got to. Yeah. You know, you got yeah. to complete your task whether you're six or eight. Mm -hmm. You know, that's they used right. to say six to six. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, that's what one of my teachers six to eight. Marion Stevens, she said, Jackie, sometimes when you give students assignments, it's about getting them to complete the that's right. assignment. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so same thing that applies to things in your life. Sometimes you got to complete that assignment. Whatever that job is that you're doing, complete it. That, that you're absolutely right. Work on that job. Work on it. Two minute job. Mm -hmm. Two minute. Complete. Half an hour job. Half an hour <laughs> job. Complete it. And like Lenore said, you know, take small pieces. Mm -hmm. That's right. Take small pieces. You don't have to jump in and do everything at once. Right. You know, do something today. Go back to it tomorrow and do something else. Mm -hmm. But. Like Jackie said, complete that assignment. Mm -hmm. You know, that's exactly what we've got to do is complete that assignment. Absolutely. Absolutely? Absolutely. Okay, she said absolutely. So we're going to complete these assignments, right? Um, <clears throat> well, listeners, viewers, thank God for all of you. Yes. We do. Thank God. And we pray that this segment has been a blessing to you and hope that you'll tune in next mm -hmm. Sunday, am I right? Next Sunday. Next yes. Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Same time, same station. And don't forget to tell a friend. But if you have any questions or if you want prayer, we can be reached at 313 Six five seven five 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 six, or you can always email us at g w e a l t h s one 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 at gmail dot com, and don't forget to always keep moving forward. And remember, God loves you, and so do we. You enjoy always moving forward with Renee. Moving, moving Everybody, this is your girl Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turn, Team AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network.